For the last year or so, I've been hallucinating about this guy with a face so bizarre that he obviously cannot be real. I'm talking about like huge ears, weird teeth, and big old magnified eyes. Hey Trace, what's up? I've learned to ignore him, but why is he here in the first place? Hi guys, it's Trace and Julian, and we're both actually here. That's exactly what a hallucination would say. For D News, hallucinations are usually either associated with drugs or mental illness, but they're more common than you might think. A hallucination can involve any or all of your senses, and you've probably had one. For example, I have definitely heard my phone ringing and felt it vibrate in my pocket, but when I pulled it out, Nope. Then you, my friend, have had a hallucination. That is true. Hallucinations could be feeling or seeing something that's not there, but it can also be hearing or smelling things that aren't there. They can be simple things like that or be more complex, like interactions with people who actually aren't there. The question is, why is your brain trying to pull a fast one on you? A recent study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences backs the model that the problem arises when your brain overreaches while trying to take a shortcut. Take visual hallucinations, for example. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of stuff in the world, and your brain can't pay attention to all of it at once. To make sense of the world around you, your brain has learned to filter out what is unimportant. And your brain doesn't get all the information it needs, so it makes an assumption and fills in the gaps. For example, when you glimpse and you see something, and then you look again and somehow it's different. Hallucination is when you make assumptions that are just plain wrong and see things that aren't really there, like when something goes wrong in a person's head and they see tiny people. It's a common enough phenomenon that it actually has a few names, like Alice in Wonderland syndrome, micropsia, and Lilliputian hallucinations. Interestingly, the tiny people they hallucinate will have different characteristics based on the person's cultural background. According to neurologist Oliver Sacks, one of the foremost experts on hallucinations, if you are Irish, you will see them as leprechauns and Norwegians as trolls, even though the miscues in their brains are identical. It's because we tend to fall back on past knowledge or a mental framework when we fill in gaps in our brain. That can explain why near-death visions tend to conform to an individual's religious beliefs. Plenty of not dying people hallucinate vividly too. It can be the symptom of psychosis, like when a schizophrenic hears voices. It's believed their brains are having trouble filtering information, possibly because of a problem with the brain's switchboard, the thalamus, though the exact cause is unknown. It's not always the brain that's faulty though, but the equipment that the brain is working with. Occasionally, people with visual or hearing problems can have visual or auditory hallucinations themselves. People who have been blind for years, from macular degeneration, for example, may suddenly start seeing whole scenes play out in front of them. Areas of their temporal lobe are spontaneously activating and giving them these visions. Oliver Sacks spoke about it in his TED Talk in 2009, saying that, for example, one area, called the fusiform gyrus, could kick in. The hallucinator might then see faces they've never seen before, and if a particular part of the fusiform gyrus is overactive, the faces would have overlarge eyes and teeth. Our brains build our hallucinations. This is called Charles Bonnet syndrome. The difference between the hallucinations and those brought on by psychosis is hallucinations of those with Charles Bonnet syndrome would feel detached, like watching a boring film, while schizophrenics tend to be auditory, feel real, and are usually interactive in a bad way. People with a visual impairment, on the other hand, wouldn't always see elaborate scenes or faces. Sachs estimated about 80% of visual hallucinations are simple geometric ones, lines and shapes that move around. Migraine sufferers will sometimes see these around flashes of light. So, given that there's all these ways for your brain to mess with your head all on its own, it's not surprising that you can turn your world upside down by introducing some new chemicals. Are we gonna talk about drugs? We're gonna talk about drugs. Certain types of drugs are hallucinogens. LSD, mescaline, and psilocybin in psychedelic mushrooms bind to receptors in your brain that are normally for serotonin and make it fire in new and interesting ways. And because your brain shapes your reality, these little chemicals can warp your whole world, or at least make it look that way to you. We should say that while Oliver Sacks liked to experiment with what he called pharmacological launch pads to study these hallucinations, we don't recommend that because you can seriously mess up your brain and you kind of need that to continue living. Yeah, glad we covered that. But you're gonna die at some point, we all do, and you'll probably see a white light and have an out of body experience and feel all euphoric and happy and stuff. And then what happens to your meat sack? I talk about that right here. Just because the body is medically dead doesn't mean everything in the body is. Some cells continue burning remaining energy, which contributes to what happens after we die. Not to mention the hundred trillion bacteria living inside of our intestines, on our skin, and elsewhere. Have you ever hallucinated? Did you see tiny people or shapes? Was it scary? Let us know about it down in the comments. Make sure you subscribe for more D News, and we will see you next time. We? Us? 
Trace, it's just you in this episode, right? Ju Julian was... Who? What? 